Hey guys, before we do anything else, I realized I did not show you how to find uh, properly find medians for even groups with an even number of uh, data values. So I lined up six numbers here for us to look at. And I, the typical strategy is to just cross out until you're one from the beginning and one from the end until you're left with something in the middle. But if I cross these two out, there's nothing. So, but if I don't, then I have two numbers. So what do I got to do? Uh, all I got to do is take the average or the mean of them. So 3 plus 4 divided by 2. Add them together and divide by 2. So I have 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. So in this case, the median would be 3.5. I wanted to, to show you guys that before I moved on. I realized I did not do that in the last video for the last section when I introduced median. Uh, so you definitely needed to know that. Uh, maybe when I have the time, I'll go back and redo that video, but for now, uh, that's where that'll be. So, uh, we are on page 195 of your student journal, 7.2, Box and Whisker Plots. Uh, one reason I remember that when making this video is because this section is, a uh, Box and Whisker Plot is essentially a test on how well can you uh, find median. What do I mean by that? So, uh, we have... A few numbers here, one, two, three, four, five. Um, the greatest value is obviously the biggest number, the least value is also obviously the smallest number of the median you know how to find. The first quartile, I will show you, uh, we will teach you now, and the third quartile, also teach you now how to find. Um, really what you're doing is you are splitting the data set in half at the median, and the first quartile is the median. Median sorry, uh, median of the lower half of data. And the third quartile is just the same thing, but for the other half. So median of the upper half of the data, or you could say greater, it doesn't really, he doesn't know what I mean. So moving on, blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, here, uh, just as an example, um, we have a least value here, a first quartile here. That means, well, if it's split up into quarters, you should think, oh, well, you know, quarters means fourths. So, uh, as a percentage, that's 25%. So each of these quarters, no matter how long they are, only represents 25%. So this is 25%. Even though it looks really big, it's just a big range, um, it's still just 25% of the numbers. Between the median and third quartile is another 25%. Between the first quartile and the median is another 25%. And between the least value in the first quartile, that is 25%. So if I have 25, 25, 25, and 25, that makes 100% altogether. That is all the values from least value to greatest value is included in this. Uh, let's see here. A box and whisker plot. Um, I mean, just that plot that shows least, greatest, uh, first quartile, third quartile, and median. A quartile. <laughs> Let's see here. A quartile is a, a number or value that splits uh, that splits the data up into twenty five percent chunks or quarters. The five number summary um, is. The numbers I just went over, we have least, uh, let's see here, least, least, first, median, third, greatest. So, least value, first quartile, uh, median, third quartile, and greatest value. Interquartile range, interquartiles, so inter means a cross, and quartile means the quartiles. So the only quartiles we've looked at really are the first and third. And the range means you subtract the bigger number from the third, uh, from the, sub, subtract the less, the least value from the greatest value. So in this case, uh, which one is greater, the third quartile or the first quartile? Third quartile. So it's third quartile minus first quartile is the, this is the range between the quartiles. So moving on, a box and whisper plot shows the variability of a data set along a number line. Uh, variability meaning like how far apart are things. So 
like here, even though it's only 25%, there's a pretty wide range. And here, even though there's the exact number, the same like number of values in the data set um, are in this longer box as compared to this one, uh, they're both just 25%. One just has a bigger range. Uh, or one has a higher variability. Uh, let's see here. Skewed left is when uh, it basically looks longer on the left side. So the left whisker. What is a whisker? A whisker is this section. So this is a whisker. 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 And this is a whisker. So when, some, when a data set is skewed left, the left uh, whisker is longer than the right whisker, and that means most of the data are on the right side of the plot. Well, how does that happen? Uh, what does that even mean? What, well, let's explain. Let's think about it. If 25%, if this is 25% of my data in this long rectangle, and I have a similarly sized rectangle, not identical, this is the one on the right, eh, it looks pretty similar, it might be a little longer, uh, but this one consists of 25 here. 25 there, and 25 here, that means on the right side, there is 75% of the data, all right? Um, symmetric means it's uh, pretty even. It doesn't have to be exactly even, but you know, even enough. Here, uh, skewed right, that means uh, right over here, we have 25%, and then right over here, we have 75%. It's just the reverse situation of skewed left. So when it's skewed right, most of the data are on the left. Um, when it's skewed left, other way around, most of the data are on the right. If you wanted to, if that was complicated for you or hard for you to remember, just remember if it's skewed left, that's where it's the whisker is longer. If it's skewed right, then the right whisker is longer. Or there's more space out there. Uh, make a box and whisker plot that represents the data. So four, five, six, six. Again, I'm going in order of least to greatest. Four, five, six, six, seven, eight, 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 nine. So that's all the eights, and that's nine. So to f I'm going to start off by finding the median. Uh, four and nine, five and eight, six and eight, seven and eight, boom, I got the median. I'm gonna make a whisker plot over here, a box and whisker plot, sorry, seven. Uh, this is not gonna be perfect because I don't have a ruler, so bear with me. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's say that, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is my median. Uh, to figure out the first quartile, I have to find the median of the first half. So I have uh, 5.5 is first quartile, or Q1 is 5.5. Add 5 and 6, divide by 2. Uh, Q3 is just 8. So Uh, there we go on that. Least, greatest. So now I'm just going to mark off where each of these things are. 5.5, 8, sorry, my median is 7, and then 9 is my greatest value. So at the median, at the first quartile, and the third quartile, It'll look something like this. This is just my rough sketch. If you have a ruler, obviously yours is going to look nicer. And that's it. All right. If you have an even number, so let's say uh, I had four, five, six, six, seven, and another seven, eight, eight. Eight, nine. To f after you find the median, to find the quartiles, you would split. Notice that to find the uh, quartiles, I just left this. I cut, split it in half by just leaving out the median. Um, for this, if you have an even number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, you could just split it up 
like that. So that's one half, and they both have five. Here they both have four. Uh, that's in order to find the first and third quartiles. To find the median, you would do it just like normal. Um, so I will leave number two to you. The box and whisker plot represents the prices. Find and interpret the range. So as a reminder, the range is the greatest minus the least. So we got the greatest, 24.5 minus the least, 8.5. Uh, 24 minus 8 is 16. Interpret. Now it says interpret. That means give it some meaning. So... Uh, what are we looking at? Sorry. The box and whisker plot represents the prices in dollars. So 24, 24, 50, 850, 11, 25, 15, 75, these are all dollars of soccer balls at different sporting goods stores. Um, so the most expensive ball is $16 more than the cheapest ball. Or all the balls are in are within sixteen dollars of each other. Describe the distribution. So if we look at this again, we are breaking it into quarters. So you'd say a quarter or twenty five percent of the balls are between eight cost between eight fifty and eleven twenty five. Twenty five percent of the balls cost between eleven twenty five and fifteen seventy five. Uh, another quarter between those two numbers and another quarter between those two numbers. Another way to describe it, um, you know, not so specifically, is to look at this and think, oh, does it look skewed at all? Or is it uh, left skewed to the left, skewed to the right, or is it symmetric? Uh, if you say this is skewed to the right, because this is slightly longer, you could say the distribution, uh, in addition to what I already said about those 25% uh, chunks, the distribution is skewed sl slightly skewed right. Honestly, if you called this symmetric, I would not find I would not really argue with that either, because um, it's just such a small difference. You could say it's barely skewed right, or you could say it's symmetric. They are pretty dang close, in my opinion. Um, I find and interpret the in court interquartile range. So the interquartile range is the third quartile, subtract the first quartile. So you say 2025 minus 1125. And then it says interpret. That means you have to come, you have to say something, like use your words. Right? Like math, the point of math is not to just calculate, it's to calculate and uh, apply or make use of. So um, half or 50% of the balls um, are within a $9 range between 11.25 and 20.25. Are the data more spread out below Q1 or above Q3? Oh my gosh, this is just a visual thing. What is more spread out? 8.50 to 11.25, uh, the difference is 2.75. Or 20.25 to 24.50, which is four, 25. Oh, which number is bigger? This one, 425. So you'd say the data, the data are more spread out above Q3. Uh, the range between greatest and Q3 is higher. Another way of looking at it is the right whisker is longer. Uh, you could also just said that. Um, I, I tell you both just so you have uh, more options in understanding this. The double box and whisker plot represents the number of tornadoes per month for a year for two states. Identify the shape. <sighs> That's so symmetric. And which one of these whiskers looks longer? Symmetric. Oops. Which one of these whiskers looks longer? This one, by far. All right. So this is skewed right. So sorry. Uh, the distribution of state A is symmetric. The distribution of state B is skewed right. Which state's tornadoes are more spread out? Explain. Uh, this is just saying, another way of asking this is, which state's tornadoes show a greater range? So you guys go ahead and calculate that. Range is greatest minus least. Greatest minus least. Explain, so go ahead and calculate that. You can say, oh, uh, whichever state it is, it should be obvious just by looking at it, which one is more spread out. 
Um, oh, this state is more spread out because the range is greater than whatever. Um, which state had the single least number of tornadoes? Well, the least is this, and what number is that? Oh, state A. Um, state A. There was a month where they had zero tornadoes. Um, okay, that's it, guys. Uh, section 7.2. Um, box and whisker plots. Again, it's just mostly being able to find the median. Uh, the core tiles are basically just how to find the median, but in within half of the data set. So again, uh, should not be complicated. If you have any questions, though, uh, make sure you ask your teacher or let me know.